That, um, Rowan, that's a really, it's a really hard act to follow. Um, that was a fantastic presentation. Um, th this, this will be a little bit shorter, uh, but I think, I think it's going to be fairly complementary and as, as a, you know, usefully, I'm also talking about the, the ANZ fields of research, um, but for, for, for a different purpose. So I'm um, talking about an exercise that I did um, I guess last year, I guess, which is mapping a subject classification to the ANZ fields of research, which, uh, and Rowan has usefully introduced the ANZ fields of research, in case anyone's not familiar with those. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Does that sound all right, Simon? Yes, you're good, thanks, Les. Thank you, I was having some problems before. Okay, so, um, there's a little story. So I, um, the work that I did in this mapping was to address a particular need that was uh, communicated to me um, by the Australian Data Archive, and that was about um, the the, uh, the the data set metadata that they share with the. Um, how do I, sorry, I'm going to minimise something on the screen. That's better. That they shared with Research Data Australia. And um, the, the, issue, the issue here, as I understand it, was that uh, Research Data Australia likes to have fields of research codes in its metadata. And um, we didn't have those codes, codes available in the Australian Data Archive metadata. So there's, um, I guess there's two or maybe more than two ways forward. One is to, to do a big sort of back cataloguing exercise where you tag all of the the data sets in Australian Data Archive with fields of research codes, or hopefully there's some other way, because um, this is required in the Australian, um, in the Research Data Australia repository. I'm not sure how hard a requirement it is actually, to be honest, so I'm not sure if it actually blocks records going in or um, if it stays as a uh, records have been flagged because they don't have those codes. But nonetheless, there's an intention to get those codes in. Um, but what, what, we, what we do know is that uh, Australian Data Archive have been tagging their data sets with a controlled vocabulary. So this is a good, uh, this is a good start in trying to um, address this problem. And that's the Australian Public Affairs Information Service, Thesaurus. Um, now, we, uh, we're interested in making a mapping between APES, as I'll call it, and uh, ANZ, uh, so that perhaps some kind of uh, uh, bulk um, tagging of ANZ codes could be done to the, um, to the data sets using that relationship. Um, and um, we, can, we can map the ANZ uh, using uh, um, linked link data approaches, let's call it, because uh, we have URIs, which is great. So, Here's an example of, of a field of research uh, concept, industrial relations, and um, it, it has a URI. Um, it's, it's obviously managed by Research Vocabularies Australia. Uh, it's available in interoperable formats, um, JSON, RDF, uh, XML, etc. So that, that's in good shape. Um, I suppose in contrast, um, the, the, the APES, this is the most machine readable version that I could get of APES. Um, APES, it, I, I work in Hawthorne, I can go down to Reading's Bookshop and I can, uh, and I can order the last printed uh, edition of APES, um, but really it hasn't been published or updated in over 10 years. Um, I, in, this present, in this presentation, I do want to talk a little bit about the, the I guess the collaboration context. I did. I did have conversations with the National Library, who originally developed APES and maintained it for a long time. Um, I also had conversations with RMIT Training, who had taken over some kind of custodianship of um, of APES. Um, but between the two parties, I wasn't able to get um, a machine readable copy of the of the, um, the vocabulary. And that wasn't, uh, and, that, and, that, and that's just because um, it wasn't available. Um, but uh, I was able to get this spreadsheet from Australian Data Archive. So this is what I was working with. Um, 
so un unlike a, a sophisticated um, sophisticated uh, 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 collection of triples, what we have here is uh, a label in the left-hand side or a term. There, there is a, a standard number, which is important. Um, some uh, an, a synonym or an alternative label. You can see for industrial relations, there's the used for term labor relations. It has some narrower terms defined, uh, delimited with pipes in that column, and um, and also some uh, related terms which are non-hierarchical. So this is this is what I'm working with, and um, I took it upon myself to import this into the RVA editor. So that's the pull party environment. Um, there was a fair bit of stuffing around, and I've found. That um, and I have found this before working with pool parties. When you have a, a vocabulary that has a mix of hierarchical structures, but also um, equivalents, uh, synonym references, it's very very difficult to import the whole thing at once. So you really have to import one one at one structure, and then um, there's a bit of manual work after that. Or possibly I could have done it better with some help from a developer or something, but I, I did unfortunately spend a bit of time trying to get this in. And um, in, in hindsight, you know, I think probably the next time I try and undertake something like this, I'll, I'll seek more help, I think. Um, but uh, nonetheless, I got it into the RVA editor and this is an editor account um, front page. So here's a page. It's at, uh, you can see the address there, um, editor.vocabs. Um, and there are some top concepts. Now that looks like, a, um, as you can see, all those top concepts start with A, and that's because there are over, over 200. Um, this <laughs> A-Pace, in, in my humble opinion, is not very well structured. It has a very, very broad top level. Um, but that's how it is, and I'm, I've not made no changes to the structure. I've just imported it as is um, into this environment. Um, here's here's a look at a pace under the hood in the RVA editor. You can see the top arrow. There's the preferred label, and it has its own URI minted by the system. You can see narrow concepts that I've imported um, with the second red arrow there. The whole tree is displayed in the left-hand side. Um, a bit more detail, which is on the right-hand side of the page, we can see that there's an alternative label uh, uh, defined there, that's labor relations. That was in a pace already, that um, synonym. Um, and I've taken the term number from a pays and defined that as a, a notation. And that's, so these are all SCOS, SCOS properties. There's a SCOS notation property, and I've stored that there. Um, right, so what I've also done is um, I've then scanned the, the ANZ fields of research. I've got, and I've gone looking um, quite manually, I'll stress at this stage, I've been looking, looking for, um, or rather, or rather I've, I've combed through the fields of research and then I've gone looking in APACE for matching concepts. Um, and so here's an example of uh, a URI from the, um, the field of research we were looking at before. I've put that in a field here called exact matching concepts. And that, um, let me just see. See, yeah, okay. So there's there's a couple of things there's a couple of things I want to say about this, and I, I thought about um, um, titling this talk, you know, how not to do a, a vocabulary mapping, because I really think that I've, there's two things that I've done wrong here. Um, first of all, the mechanism that I've used, which is which is very manual, and me literally, you know, combing through the tree of fields of research. Um, I mean, fields of research is about three or four levels deep. It's not impossible to come through manually, but probably there's a better way of doing that. And I'm going to show you a, a better way of making quick matches between vocabularies in, in this environment. Um, but uh, another thing, another thing I think I've done wrong is um, I've defined this as an exact matching concept. Now, Rowan talked a little bit about um, the lots of considerations into deci deciding whether or not concepts were, were matching with an exact matching or close matching. And that was really useful. And I can really relate to that scenario where 
I've been doing some consolidation work in some other taxonomies. And one thing I of, often want to know is how is these terms that appear to be the same, how is the first one being used in a particular repository? Has it been used consistently? Has it been used different, differently to how the other terms being used? And there could be a number of reasons for that. It could be that it's a structural, um, um, yeah, it, it could be where the term, how the term is structured in the vocabulary, what its broader terms are, what its siblings are, synonyms as well, or it could just be how it's been used in a particular cataloging operation. Um, but um, I just want to talk a bit about this distinction between an exact matching concept and a close matching concept. Um, I sort of got, I got some way into this project and I thought, Sometimes I'm using exact matching concept when I feel very confident about something, and I'm using close matching concept when I feel a bit less confident about something. And, and I, I started to feel a bit, um, I, I started to wonder if that was the, the, the best way to be progressing. And so I actually went back to, um, I actually went back to the SCOS reference to have a look at what these relationships are. And, I realised that I should have I should have been a little bit more au fait with what these mean. Um, if we look at the, the definition of a close match and an exact match in SCOS, assertions that I can't make, no, what's the word? Um, I can't make assumptions that the other party would make the same batch, make the same match back to my vocabulary. Um, whereas in an exact match, there's an assumption that the, the match is uh, transitive. And, and I think that this really, with, with that comes an assumption that there's been some kind of dialogue between the, um, between the parties. There's been a dialogue between me as a vocabulary manager and someone else as a vocabulary manager and there's been some sort of agreement some sort of handshake um and i can't say with my hand on my heart that i have that agreement <laughs> between between apos and the fields of research um i haven't i haven't consulted enough really so i have really no no position to be able to make these kind of assertions that there are exact matches between between these concepts so i think i think usefully these these goss definitions I, I, the way I interpret them is that they really suggest if you're going to make an exact match, you really need be, need to be doing cert, certain consultative work. I think um, to to bring to bring parties together. Um, the second the second thing that I did wrong. <laughs> Um, is really the, the the manual linking I did. There is a facility in the Research Vocabulary Australia, um, the RVA editor. There's a facility for doing uh, batch project linking, and I think Rowan, I think Rowan was referring to this. And I'm sort of showing you the back end a little bit. So in this screenshot, I've got um, APES on the left hand side, and on the right hand side, I've got another vocabulary. And this is just a dummy, a dummy test. It's called a thousand turns. And there's a facility here for matching concepts. Now I can scroll, I can scroll the left-hand terms or the right-hand terms, and I can find what I think is a match, and I can drag, I can drag one term onto another, and that creates a match. Um, but there's also a facility to do what's called batch linking. If I do that, the system will. Um, the, the, the system will pass all the terms and go looking for matches. And so if I hit that batch linking, I end up with um, two columns, uh, one for, from each vocabulary. And um, it's then up to me to review those and to decide whether on the right-hand side, you can see a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I can decide whether or not they're a match. I can also change what kind of match it is. You can see exact match there is um, the default. Um, for better or worse, um, so this th this is useful for getting getting through the list more quickly. You still make decisions along the way to approve all the matches. Um, I'll just point out something else which is really useful. So 
here's a match that the batch linking predicted and the reason why it's predicted that industrial relations and labor relations are a match is because in the the vocabulary on the right hand side uh, industrial relations is the alternative label so this matching algorithm doesn't just match preferred terms with preferred terms but it also matches preferred terms with non-preferred terms and um i, I really any sort of matching or mapping uh, algorithm that doesn't take into consideration synonyms, I think is uh, really not very useful. Um, so anyway, it's good that this facility is here. Um, okay, so just in, just in summary, um, if I was to go about this again, there's a couple, there's some things I would have done differently. Um, probably, I, I, I really should have worked more closely with um, RVA. Um, because this is something I went about uh, really on, on my own. But what I should have done is get, ask for a copy of the fields of research or find some way of getting the fields of research into my editing environment so that I can do this kind of batch thing. Um, so I, I really should have investigated that. And um, so it's something that I'll probably be talking to Rowan and others about going forward. Um, also possibly assistance with, with liaising with the third parties. like I. I and, and you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit about out of the loop, to be honest. I don't, I don't know who to talk to about the fields of research. I don't know who do you, who do you talk to about, um, you know, the the possibility of um, linking linking back to another vocabulary, or whether there's any interest in that or not. I don't know. I've got no idea. Um, and the matching, well, yeah. So I suppose really the rule that I would use going forward with doing this kind of work is that it's a close match uh, by default, and you only get an exact match if it's by agreement. Um, that's my reflection on that. Um, okay, I think I'm done.